Hi team, it's Jessie coming to you live from Niagara Falls, New York, and I thought it would be better to make a video of how to do the ComScore profiling um, as opposed to sending screenshots, which would take way longer. So here is the video. Let's try and see if this works. Transition. All right, there's my screen. Here's ComScore. You're going to go to ComScore and you're going to log in. That's the first step. It should load for you. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it a little longer. Okay, and you're going to log in. Mine was already logged in. I'm going to click over here and I'm going to go to My Metrics. It should be the first thing in your menu. Once you get to My Metrics, going to wait for it, wait for it, wait for it, and we're going to pull up a report. Now, I'm not going to lie, ComScore is not the most intuitive of uh, all the different types of reports that we have, but the one that I go to is Plan Metrics, Key Measures. So Key Measures, there's lots of different reports, and you need to kind of play around a little bit to understand where to go, but you're going to go Plan Metrics, Key Measures. Um, you can select different geographies and different time periods. I tend to just select a month or the last three quarter, uh, the last three month average. You can edit your target. You can either click through and actually select one at a time what these items are as you select each thing. It's going to expand and you can go further or an alternative way is to actually go into the search and say things like mail because you want um, mail. Uh, users only. So then you would go to gender, male, and uh, you'd select that. You checked it off. You push it over to the selected audience. You might want 25 to 34 year olds. You search and then you select it. You push it over. Now it's part of your audience. Um, if, if you have a specific age range, you can just say age, right? Um, but generally it's only going to come in these different buckets. So 25 to 34, 25 to 49, 25 to 54, or any kind of in-between um, measurement. If there's something really specific that you're looking for, so maybe it's that they wear contacts or something, um, you can type in the word contacts. This doesn't say that the user wears them, but it shows people who have visited 1-800-CONTACTS, CAMCONTACTS, WalmartContacts.com. So, I would probably not use this if I was specifically looking for people who wore contacts, but this would be an alternative. It's, it's good to see what's in there. Um, you can also select and come down here into health and then say ailments or conditions and look for, you can browse. Um, another way to do it would be to type in something like vision and see what comes up for vision. Um, so these are always going to be different categories, electronics, consumers, computers, we don't really that's not really where we're looking, so we can collapse it. Um, here we go, health, eye care, vision correction by contact lenses. That would be something that was bought over the contact, over for ailments, um, you know, bought over the counter in the last, oh, this doesn't have a time frame on it, but sometimes it will say it like here, bought prescription from online pharmacy for ailment condition in the last six months. And this would say in the last six months, they bought prescription online pharmacy in the last six months. Um, they, here's caregiver for somebody. So there's different categories here. So you can select what you wanted. Um, maybe you select all of these uh, at the same time. So anybody who's purchased um, or has a vision care correction for contact lenses, if I select multiple things and push them over at the same time, these are currently joined by ands. If I push them over at the same time, however, since I've got multiple selects, it's actually going to join them with or. So it's and any one of these um, particular groups. So once you've done that, you can actually save this target. So let's call this, let's say that this persona was named Bob or something like that. We could save this as Bob. It will say that the list is successfully saved. And then when you come into your saved audiences over here, you'll see Bob you'll notice that I have already created an Emma profile, and then whenever I run different reports, I can get the different information for Bob or for Emma. So we'll go ahead and hit OK. So right now this is gonna run for Bob. And then under this media section, you've got top 100 properties. Current, that's the default selection. It's a pretty good selection. Um, or you can kind of click 
through to these other more um, narrow focus things. So if, let's say that we only want to appear on, we only want to know about retail websites or health related websites. So we could select that. And then when you run the report, it's only going to run this particular audience versus health related um, websites so that you're not necessarily getting Google or whatnot. So then when you get, when your report runs, and we chose health, so, so it was a very fast, um, very fast export. What this is saying is that um, for my profile, Bob, there are 394,000, because you got the triple zeros here, 394,000 total users on the internet that match the profile I just defined. And then out of these 394,000, each one of these kind of breakdowns, so if they visited the health category, if they visit a specific website within it, these are going to be the counts of the audience that both fits the profile as well as fits the, um, it visits that particular media site. To the right, what this is going to tell you is how, whether this website um, reaches, you know, how effectively this website reaches our audience. So for example, and let me pull up my calculator so you can see the math kind of behind this, you've got 46,000 users out of 394,000 that visit Everyday Health, so 46 divided by 394 should be 11.67 percent. Okay, so they rounded kind of in a funky, or they rounded out a lot. But um, ultimately, that means that if you were to have all of the reach on Everyday Health, you could reach 11.8 percent of your 394 audience. Um, in terms of um, percent composition of un oops, I just moved some col columns around. Um, the index composition, this has to just do with the website. So obviously if we say 394,000 against this audience, it's going to index at 100. Otherwise, um, you're looking at um, things that under-index or over-index. So everyday health over-indexes, Kaiser Permanente over-indexes, Pop Sugar Fitness over-indexes. All of these sites are actually over-indexing for them, which is kind of interesting, Pop Sugar for this male targeted audience. But all of these sites that I've got highlighted right now, they actually over-index for that particular audience. So those are some of the key measures that we would look at, and that's how you could potentially come up with different sites to run. Uh, you don't have to only look at health, though. I didn't look at it when I ran the Emma profile. You can look at the entire, uh, like, all properties or what have you. Okay, so that is how you run the report. I hope this was helpful. Okay, thanks, guys. Bye.